hello there. Welcome, that was weird. Start over. Hey guys, Jack Dice here with Obsessed Fishing and welcome back to another tournament video. Wow, you clicked on it, you probably already knew what it is, but it's up and coming episode two of season two and this is on Lake Wiley in the South Carolina, North Carolina border. And this was in March and this is my video of it. Um, what else do I wanna say? This tournament right here, this was in the North Carolina division. It was the second event of the year. It was in the March, and the so we're talking pre-spawn time of year, and it was on a lake I've never been to before, Lake Wiley on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. So coming into this event, I knew that it was gonna be you know pre-spawn, spawn type event, and I had known from, I'd been watching the weather a little bit and knew that the water was probably going to be stained and probably, in my mind, I thought I was gonna be doing a lot of power fishing, a lot of cranking coming into this event, but in practice, that never materialized. I threw a crankbait a ton. I had like four different crankbaits on the deck and didn't get a single bite on any of them. I did the only thing I knew how to do, and that's go finesse. So in practice, I pulled out a shaky head, saw an isolated log off the bank towards the back of a creek. First cast, just fire over there, lift up, and it's swimming off. And that was a critical clue. You know, it was a piece of cover that was isolated, which is always high percentage, but it was off the bank. So that really told me that the fish were probably closer to pre-spawn than spawn. They weren't as far and in the backs of the creeks, despite the water temperature being in the mid to upper 50s sometimes. The shaky head seemed to be the ticket. And so in the next two days of practice, that's what I figured out. I found some key stretches of riprap and hard banks. And really as the days went on, looking at at the water temperature in the couple days that I fished there for practice, it seemed to be going up and those fish seemed to be going farther along in the spawn each day. In fact, I caught a fish off a piece of cover that had a bloody tail. The water temperature was mid 50s. In the mornings, it was, you know, 49. And, but the fish were clearly, these males were pulling up and trying to get ready to spawn, making their beds. And I knew the females couldn't do, be too far behind. The problem was the only thing in practice was finding a big bite. The few that I could set the hook on, a lot of times they weren't even keepers or they were just barely keepers. So it was hard to find a good bite, but I had gotten one bite, one clue as to a better bite. That was actually throwing a bladed jig in about a foot of water, really, really shallow in the back flat section of this creek. And it was the only clue I'd had to a big bite. And so I knew I was gonna keep that in my mind, but to start off, I was gonna go with where I'd gotten a bunch of bites, and that's was how I was gonna start the day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again, grateful and thankful for everything you've given us. We ask this in your loving name, amen. All right, let's go get them. Let's get them. One fish does so much for you mentally. <laughs> You're like, I'm not getting skunked today. No, no, no. After we get the fish. Gonna be close again. That one's gonna be a lot closer than the other one, I think. Thank you. Oh shoot, he's gonna be 13 and three quarters. He's barely a keeper, but he touches. Let's fit. Apparently. You can throw in there. Yeah. Oh, he's little, never mind. Oh, no. Good. Yeah, he's 
bump. Nah, he ain't even close. Oh! I'm an idiot. That was my bad. I wasn't paying attention. What'd you do? And he swim, swim all the way out with it. Mm. That was my bad. I told myself, I said, I was after losing that one, I'm like, don't no, you dare yeah, bite me yeah. again. I want to jack your face in. I'm not going to set the hook weak anymore. I'm going to do that again. No, sir. I decided, you know what? This is the time where you just look for stuff that's similar and key in on it. And it seemed to be what I was looking for, particularly was a hard bottom, rock and rip wrap seemed to be key. Lay downs were vet, you know, also high percentage spots. And you were looking for the the last half of the pocket. It was actually funny, even though I think a lot of guys were you know, thinking pre-spawn, looking at the water temp, a lot of these males, at least for getting keepers, were really far along. And so I was actually targeting the very back half and the last little bit of deep water in these pockets, the last place where the channel would swing up against that bank and it would be four or five foot versus the back of the pockets only a foot and a half deep. And it was, if it had hard bottom, that seemed to be a critical thing. But I wasn't, didn't fish flawless to start the day. I actually ended up with it within that first creek missing a few critical fish. And I actually didn't have a limit. I'd fished through all the areas and stretches that looked good in the creek, and I had only four bass in the live well. And so here it was a time to make a critical decision. Do I run down the lake all the way down to near the dam to a couple creeks where I had chicken fish off days and days ago, or do I run up the lake to where I got my big bite but I only got a few bites up there. So run far away from the launch, wake, eat up a lot more run time to go fish something that's maybe unsure or run up the lake to something that wasn't getting a lot of bites, but I did get a big bite, but it's closer to the ramp so you have more fishing time. So I decided I'm gonna go down there. What the heck? I'm gonna gun it all the way down there. get down there and I roll in the pot the first pocket that looks pretty good where I've had a few bites and shook a few off second lay down in that pocket I roll it by I catch my fifth keeper and it's a good one and that settled me down it made me think Whew. all right maybe there's some fish here so I continued to fish in the pocket and actually made a few critical culls and so now I've got a limit I'm culling but they're not big culls and I don't have any big fish and so again the decision was do I keep fishing down here or do I go ahead and make another run and in my mind, I knew I wanted to fish the creek that I'd gotten my big bite in practice because I figured it was the kind of place, it seemed like a place a big fish would move up if we had enough sunlight. It was a big flat. It's the kind of place a fish will set up on when it really warms up. And it was the only place I'd gotten a big bite at all. So I said, you know what? It's that time of day. Late afternoon, I made a run all the way back up the lake, through the bridge, and up into this creek to the very back where it was a really giant flat except for the left side there was a creek trail running along it 
So I pick up that bladed jig. The wind had started had it started to pick up too, which I figured would only be a good thing for helping with my reaction bait bite to try to get a bigger one. Yep, caught a five and a half here yesterday. This is where I got a bigger bite. Really shallow, but you know, with the water warming up, water's almost 58. No. Botch that up. All right. Make a move. See if we can snatch us up one big old pig. That'd be really nice. Like a ten pounder. That would that would do it. I'd be satisfied. Or even just a three or four. Just something nice to cull. Nah. Nah. Oh, big it. Big it. This side. Yes! Woo! Oh, my gosh. Thank you, dude. That's a good one. Yeah, boy. That's what I was looking for up here. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's a good one. Dude, this one's pretty small. That's a good one to be getting rid of. Oh, I'm shaking real bad. One as big as the one yesterday, but that's plenty big. That one makes up some ground right there. Crap. Dude, my rod broke. Yeah, there was a fish, but a rod broke when I set the hook. I don't think he's on anymore. Crap. Dang. I think that was a big one. Dang, go. Oh, he's still on there, dude. Get the net, get the net. <laughs> Look at that. The handle snap. And he was still on there. <laughs> and neither I. I would thought you'd think he'd be up there. That's a chunker. You might call for me. So I roll up there. Again, I'd only had one bite up there, but I figured why not? So I pick up my bladed jig, see a nice lay down, and I'm bringing my bladed jig. I feel it come over a tree limb. And then I feel it, thunk, and when I set the hook, it didn't move. And that's when I knew I had a good one on. And I fought him all the way back to the boat. My co gets out the net. He nets the fish. It was a good one, probably in the four pound class, one of the biggest fish I'd seen. It was the second biggest fish I'd hooked all week. And that made me truly excited. So I knew I was in the right place and I'd just gotten that critical bite that I needed. So I said, I'm gonna fish here the rest of the day. And, uh, but at this point, again, they're starting to bite. I'm getting some of those better quality ones, but you look at the clock, it's time's out. If I check this coals, we gotta go. So, went ahead, took it on back to the ramp down at Lake Wiley, and that was it. That was the end of the day. Well guys, it might not be the world's biggest bag of bass, but it's a dang good one. Thankfully I got that last big one on film, made an adjustment, went to the one area I got one bite and missed it and it looked big and caught a big one nearby to that last area I fished and went through there and caught one probably over four and another real good one to end the day and call out all my just keepers. So feeling pretty good. Hopefully they 
get us somewhere. I'd really like to cash a good check. That'd be really nice. And uh, yeah, caught a decent amount of fish today. Didn't light the world on fire, but had fun, cold, and uh, nothing else to ask for. Just blessed to be out here and uh, blessed to have a great day. I mean, with big ones being so hard to come by, in three days I had one big bite. So to get one in the tournament means a lot. And so, I don't know, we're about to hit it on the trailer and see what they weigh. Next. 18. Got him. Got five. There's one thing I've noticed about you since you've been fishing with us, you always catch a damn check. I try to. To me, that's success. As long as I catch a check. Five and five. This Jack Dice right there for me, Jack. I live in Virginia. Five pass. Good job on that today, Jack. I'm trying to get it. Good job, partner. Thank you. How we go about it? Uh, throwing a whole bunch of stuff. Shake head to get a limit and then cold out with the chatterbait, buzz bait, and the spinnerbait. If you were going tomorrow, what would you pick up first? Uh, all of that again. <laughs> I got you. Five bass for Jack Dice. Five bass going to weigh 13 pounds, two ounces, 13 two, sitting in third place right now, Jack. Thank you. You know, because it was a lake I didn't know, I had no idea how I had stacked up. Sometimes you, on fisheries that I know, you could tell when it's a tough day or when it's a good day. And I couldn't tell the difference whether I just had a good day or whether I'd actually figured something out. And so I didn't know going into weighing what it was gonna be like. But I weighed in my fish, it ended up being, you know, over 13 pounds at the end of the day, the end of the weighing when the scales closed, I ended up in 11th place. So missed the top 10 by like two ounces but, you know, that's a great finish and it's a great check and I was super happy with it. Though, my only regret in this tournament looking back was not running to that flat up in that creek way up the lake sooner. You know, it was just where I got a big bite, it set up right and once again I just ran out of time when they were starting to bite up there and I kind of dilly dallied in the middle of the day after I caught my limit and culled a few times just just kind of you know giving you a limit though it's very it's super good for calming the nerves and sometimes allows you to focus you know clear your head to make decisions without fear sometimes you can stumble and go into a place of comfort where you just or a false relaxation where you don't fish motivated because like you do when you don't have a limit and so I think that kind of played into it. I just decided to go ahead and run other places rather than go ahead and saying, you know, I've got my limit, gamble, go to the place where I'd gotten a big bite and just see what happens. And I just didn't give it enough time, leave enough time to do that when I had the clues there to, that should have told me to do that. It wasn't like a decision. There's some decisions that you know, looking back, you should have made, but based on what you found out in practice and what you did during the day, you can't fault yourself for not making them. You can't fault yourself for trying something that you got a couple good bites doing that day too long. You can't fault yourself for certain things. But then there are some that you should have made and that was one. I just wish I had run up there sooner. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys wanna see the setups and baits that I use, again, um, the favorite rods, the Summit and the Jackhammer, again, played a critical role for me. Finesse fishing with that shaky head to get a limit, throwing a trick worm on a shaky head, a 1 8 ounce shaky head and throwing it in June Bug and Green Pumpkin Green. That was a great way to get some bites along with a little finesse War Eagle spinnerbait and then a 3 8 ounce Green Pumpkin Chatterbait on the Summit Rod was the key for getting those better bites along with the buzz bait. I actually mixed in a lot of baits this week. So anyway, if you want to check out all the setups because there's a lot that I caught fish on this week, um, check them out down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Tight lines, God bless. We'll see you next time.